welcome back to Bunter's Yard. So today we are weathering a daypole fruit van. Now we've done one of these before, but this will be slightly different. This is um, one of a pair that we're making. One in uh, BR blue and this one in red. So they're gonna be different to the previous one uh, on the video that you may have seen before, because we want to um, put some worn effects on the doors. I've seen a picture on uh, on Google, I can't show it because it's copyright unfortunately, so you have to take my word for that. But the doors are worn, the paint has come off in sort of the busy traffic areas. Um, so we kind of want to copy that. Um, and so we're going to use uh, um, different techniques and uh, sort of experiment with that. Now these, uh, these bits here at the bottom, just be careful if you do weather these, these are really thin and they break. I seem to have broken every single one. So I'm going to pay particular attention today and hopefully I won't break it. So for the weather, uh, sort of the worn wood effect, what we are going to use are these oil brushes and we can use these three colours. We've got ochre, which is like a light yellowy brown, buff, which is a beige, and then this medium grey, I think it's called. And they come in a, in a part of a kit. I'll put the link down below to those. Now the brushes that come in those are, are way too big for what we're going to need today. So we're just going to put a little tiny bit in the palette we just need um, that's more than enough actually just two dots of that uh, that's the uh, the ochre and then that one is the buff and then we can use the gray as well now um, when wood um, fades in the sunlight it does go to this sort of between these browns and these gray colors now that gray looks a bit dark on the screen it's not really it's quite a light color um, so there's our three colours and we're going to put them on like a, so it looks like a sort of transition between one and the other. Similar to do when we do rust, but we're just going to use different shades. So we're going to use the dark colour first, so the ochre, that's the brown one. And I'm just uh, looking for the correct brush to use. So we're going to use a fine brush to dot it on. We really don't want that much on then. And then we're going to use a, a small soft brush uh, to blend it in a little bit. So we just try it uh, just to get an idea of how much we're going to need. So we just got to dot it on. We're not, it's already diluted this paint in the tube, so we don't need to um, add any oils. You can do, but I've, uh, for this particular um, use, we're not going to. Then with the soft brush, um, we're just going to uh, soften that in and see what effect it looks. I mean, it's, it's probably a bit too. Uh, it's not effective enough so we'll put more on we'll try again and then we're going to blend it in as I mentioned this before the good thing of oils is that uh, there's a number of uh, reasons for using oils for this type of thing is that one that it takes a long time to dry so we can uh, we can manipulate it for much much longer than uh, you could with acrylics for instance acrylics would have dried by now and we won't be able to blend this in any further um, also we can add to this if we choose to if we don't like it we can add a uh, little thin thinners over the top and just get rid of the whole thing and start again so uh, I would suggest really you know, give oils a go uh, they uh, they really are uh, a game changer if you're into weathering so for this and for rusts uh, especially they're really really cool so trying to create some sort of different shapes uh, on these. There's a lots of these, uh, this little, the wear, where this paint will come off. Um, on the pictures that I've seen, they are sort of those sort of traffic areas, the bits that where people are going to handle, where there's going to be keys and chains and all sorts of things knocking against the paint and uh, uh, cracking that and uh, making it flake off. So we're just going to try and create a few different sort of patterns. So that's the first layer I've gone on, and the next one, which is this um, buff color, which is it's, um, uh, just a lighter shade. We're going to do more of that and, and put that kind of in the middle. We don't want to go right up to the edge. We want there to be sort of some sort of transition between that shade and the um, and the ochre, that, that lighter brown color. Now it hasn't got to be a perfect blend, so don't. Uh, don't worry too much about that if it's not exactly blended in it hasn't got to be that smooth because it won't necessarily be that way in real life it will uh um, there'll be patches here and there it won't i won't fade in a uniform way 
So this door in the middle is just the idea is that maybe the door is newer or not used as much and gets a little bit different wear because it's just around the around that grab handle, around that lock system in the middle. We're just gonna um, we're just gonna put the worn wood effect around that. Now this may at the moment just look a little bit sort of stark and uh, contrasty. Um, it will, um, when we get the rest of the layers on, it will sort of uh, blend in a bit more. It won't, won't stand out as much. It's just that the rest of the wagon is completely clean. And then we've just got this, um, this faded patch. So it's going to look a bit odd to start with. But hopefully as we get our next couple of layers on, it will, um, it will sort of blend in and soften the effect up a little bit. So this is our, um, our grey colour. And again, we're just concentrating even more in the centre of that um, warm patch. Hasn't got to be completely uniform, but just trying to get some sort of transition between the colours. So that's the first part done. We need to do the, the other side, of course. But I just want to add in a few uh, little pieces here and there, just to sort of highlight bits and bits. Um, bottoms of the doors they're going to get knocked and the paint's going to come off of those and where the edges of the paint goes to the plank anyway it's that's where it's going to start to flake and chip so we're just going to touch a little bit of that in I'm just trying to do this in a random fashion because the paint won't flake um, in the same place everywhere on every panel it'll be different some uh, some of the planks will be painted slightly better than others maybe or they make it different sort of damage that starts the flaking process I'm using the mix of the colours, just really touching it in ever so lightly. So made me feel the places where I think it would, uh, where it would start, to, where the paint would start to chip off. So where the hinges have been bolted on, for instance, that's going to break through the paint, um, and that's going to let water get underneath the paint and uh, pop that off and uh, start that flaking process. And then with a soft brush, just to soften it, just ever slightly, I'm just stippling it ever so slightly. It just kind of softens the edge up just ever so, uh, ever so slightly. So our next stage is a pin wash now in this um, in this well in the palette here we have odorless thinners or low odor thinners which is the correct thinners for our oil paints and it just thins it down to make it really really runny um, and this will allow it to sort of flow and with the pin wash what we are basically doing is we're going to target into these, uh, these gaps between the panels and actually just touch it towards the end there you can see uh, the science that, which is capillary action will just sort of suck the paint along so you haven't got to paint them in in straight lines you haven't got to worry about that because science will take care of that for you uh, it's quite pleasing to, to do this and to watch it actually now don't worry if you're going to get any paint on the uh, on the panels any little dots here and there we can get rid of those in a minute because these are oils uh, very easy to clean up in a moment so don't uh, don't be too concerned with that but you know try and minimize it as much as you can obviously to try and target those gaps where you want the uh, the wash to flow into I need to go around the whole wagon doing this and you kind of get the little knack for it once you've done it a few times you know, you know how um, sort of dilute the wash needs to be and how much you need on your brush it's just uh, just getting used to it so say don't worry about those little dots on the planks we'll uh, we will get rid of some of those in a moment again when this uh, when this dries the effect will um, lessen off slightly it's always a lot brighter when it's in uh, suspending in its oil once the oil goes it will fade back just ever slightly 
and won't be as uh, sort of pronounced as it looks at the moment. So once that's done with uh, with our odorless thinners, uh, we'll just clean the brush off. We don't want the brush to be too wet. And then what we can do is just clean along the planks where we don't want those sort of dots um, and those marks to exist. So uh, some of these, they're not too bad actually. They look like they could just be faded paint. So I might leave a lot of these on. Uh, but if you've got anything that's an obvious dot, you can clean those back such as that bit there, so on entirely your interpretation of uh, of what it should look like. Let's check the other side. So there's a few bits over here and we'll clean some of these back. So with our brush which is uh, cleaned in thinners. We don't want it too wet. Otherwise we just end up moving it around and then we can just brush it and we can clean off as much as we need of that. And then leave it for maybe uh, you know five ten minutes have a cup of tea come back and have a look and then See if you still uh, if you still agree that it's uh, looking as it should do. So once that's done, we're going to let that dry. And we're going to give this coat of varnish. We're using a matte varnish here. I've just let the oils dry. You can leave this to dry overnight so it dries properly. Um, but we're going to use a varnish just to seal everything in, so that anything we do on top of this won't affect these um, these oils that we've applied up to now. And then we're going to leave the varnish to dry for a few hours till it's thoroughly dry. And then we're going to crack on with our next uh, next stages. We want to add a couple of um, sort of repairs to this. So we're going to use a couple of different colours. We'll use this red leather. It looks like a sort of paint primer, like a red primer maybe. Um, it's just different shades of what we've got on the wagon. Uh, we're going to use black. This is the Model S. So it's already um, thinned out. And then this one is from AK Interactive, part of the sort of wood kit. I think wood kit number two. I think it is. I'll try and find the link. Put it down below for you. It says medium grey on the bottle. Becomes out like a beigey colour. It's not really. Well, I'm sure it's grey, but it looks like a wood uh, tone to me. And we're going to use, use those three colours just to um, paint some panels in to look like there's been some repairs and uh, you know where the colors of the paints are a little bit different to what you would um, you know to the original so we'll start with the the medium gray the sort of wood color so this looks like a repair uh, where they've replaced one of the planks and they've either not painted it or um, all the paints come completely off so I'm just doing this with a very fine brush and um, haven't got my super magnifying eyes on um, so uh, this is as good as it's going to get for this particular one and we need to put in some random panels random planks that you want to replace um, I always say this you know it's difficult to create random because you tend to do the same when you get on the other side or as you go along you you, you kind of tend towards the same um, sort of panels uh, because they're easy to paint or whatever the reason may be but uh, try to resist that so with the, we're going to replace this one on the end, edge of the door um, so the plank goes obviously from the top to the bottom so we tend to want to do the whole of the, uh, the plank Then we'll change the color this is the red but it's got a bit of the wood sort of mixed in with it i'm not being too particular about cleaning the brush in between colors it's not really that important so this one we'll replace two of the planks there and they've been primed um, and they've never been painted or it's been painted the wrong color red whatever your you know your, your backstory is with this you can play a completely different color if you choose I did consider painting one of the doors uh, in BR blue because the other um, fruit van is BR blue and yeah could have easily just had a door swapped from one to another if the door on this one was rotten and the other one was a scrapper yeah, 
maybe it was feasible that they would have done, you know, changed the whole door. Um, so yeah, we could we could do that. Now these planks on this panel, they would run between the doors from one end to the other. Um, so typically, it would be the whole of the uh, the plank that would be replaced and painted. But there's no reason why they can't be painted different colours, different ends. So one may have got a primer, and one end may not have, for whatever reason that might be. So just trying to mix it up a little bit, create a little bit of variation. So we're using the red primer colour here, but we mix it in with the wood. So it just creates a different colour totally. And then usually on the ends of these, there's a black panel as well. So uh, this can be written in or I have some, some detail in. So we'll just paint a couple of these here. Maybe just two of these planks in this black would be okay. Well, this doesn't have to be too precise, this black, because they're normally hand painted. Um, it would appear, so they're normally a little bit shaky. One more thing I want to do just on this door, just gonna create another black panel as well. Just gonna paint this in freehand again. As I say, it'd be typically they would be painted in by hand, not sort of masked off in any way, they'd just be a, a squarish type shape. Um, from the pictures I've seen anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna create a um, a black panel that we can we can put a marking in or write in later on. Then the final thing we'll do with the uh, with these acrylics, um, although this may not even show up once we've um, got our weathering powders on, just at the bottom of the door we're touching in with this black, just a little tiny bit because that the bottoms of the door would go rotten, and they would end up being uh, they, they they become black at the bottom. So we're just going to touch it in just a little bit. It's not um, by by no means an essential step to do on this one, um, but before we give it a go. Like I say, when we put the powders on, it may disappear totally anyway, so we'll see. So our next step is to just to get the paintwork to fade a little bit, to make it look a bit more old and, and um, sort of fade in the sun. And we're using a colour called Sand, which is a model air colour. It's already thinned out, and I've thinned it down just a bit further with, uh, with some thinners, just to make it a little bit thinner. And I'm going really, really lightly, so I really don't want to add sort of blocks of colour, we're just trying to add a little bit of a gradient, especially to the top, and uh, just maybe a little bit around to the bottom of the doors. And we'll do the, uh, the ends as well. And then the other side. Now the idea is, one of the things we want to do is to blend that um, where, the, where we've done the, the warm paint effects on the doors, kind of blend it into that. So we need to make sure that the fade um, sort of touches that so it kind of blends in a little bit better. Now if we look on some uh, of these, you'll see complete panels which are totally different colour for whatever reason that might be they have just completely faded differently, whether they've been repainted and the paints are obviously reacted different to the sunlight. Don't know, but uh, yeah, don't be afraid to to have completely uh, random panels with different colours because uh, 
that was quite often seen from the from the images that I've been looking at anyway. And we're going to use this um, red leather again, and just to create a, like a rusty wash. So I'll thin this down um, just with thinners, and um, just going to touch it on the, the metal sort of easy areas here. Um, I made from uh, some sort of metal angles, and we're just going to use that just to add a little bit of rust color into that. Once this dries, it will be, uh, you know, be quite subtle, may not even be noticeable. But we're just going to put it in these bits, maybe a little bit on the hinges and around the locks and so on. But I'm not going to try and cover everything. You can, if you want to, do this and maybe use a different shade, maybe use a darker brown as well, just to create, a, you know, a nicer rust effect. But uh, I'm just trying to add the colour in, um, just to give the impression of. Or rust on these uh, on these angles. And then on the bottom of these vents, I think these vents were probably made from steel or some sort of metal, so uh, they would rust. So we're just going to add a bit of rust onto that, and then we'll add some rust powders on as well later. So onto the roof, we're using a colour called um, smoke, which is kind of like a uh, a translucent or so a see-through doesn't doesn't paint um, completely yeah it doesn't cover it completely so we're just gonna spray that on and then we shall wipe it off now I've thinned this down this is a model color um, so it needs thinning but I've thinned it a little bit more than I normally would because I want to be able to clean it off so we're using the blue cloth just to uh, just to wipe it back in a sort of random fashion now um, you can use a brush if you want to use a brush with this, maybe just a very, very damp brush, not too wet, otherwise you'll just take it all off again. But just grinding, trying to create these runs from the, uh, from the from that sort of, the, uh, the middle of the roof line, the apex of the roof line, just down the sides, the way that the um, water would run off of the roof. And by using the cloth, where the uh, those vents come up, um, it's going to leave some of the smoke effect around the, the vents just to highlight them a bit more and uh, hopefully give that effect of the of the water running off the roof. And then just down the middle, we're just going to add another line of the smoke in. just a little bit more and then finally just catch the edge of the uh, of the roof line the leading and the trailing edge of the roof line um, because because they would catch more smoke I guess so onto our weathering pattern now I've taken the wheels off and I've given them a um, just a coat of a brown um, just so it's a, like a base for the rust. We're going to add it in a moment. And the um, the chassis and the axle boxes, we've, we've not painted these, but we did actually hit it with the varnish earlier on, so it's it's kind of going to grab the um, the weathering powder is okay because black is fine for what we want to do. I like to add in this dark rust. It's very dark brown, uh, and this just gives a, a nice sort of a rust effect. I quite like these colours now. I really don't want to cover it completely. And then we just add a few different shades in. So this uh, this sort of mid rust colour. Just a bit of that in a few different places. You know, around the sort of joins and places where you're going to, uh, you know, where rust will, corrosion will start. Maybe at the end of those beams. Guess would uh, be a good place for that rust to to begin, where all the uh, the mud and the water would sort of congregate, and uh, good place to start rust. And then this yellow is uh, it's just a nice colour. Once you blend that in, it looks quite nice. And then underneath there, there's a looks like a um, like a cylinder brake cylinder perhaps. So uh, 
would be on that just to highlight that a little bit. Now in this, um, in the well here, we've got this green color. This is um, chrome oxide green from Humbrol. I'll put the link down there in the description for you. And this creates like a, a an algae mold moss type effect, but it is really bright. So that's, I just want to show you that I was mixing that in with some of the weathering powder. And it looks quite uh, vivid and green on there, but we're going to go over it again in a minute. But don't use it neat on its own because it is just too bright. It has no, uh, I don't think it has any place in, in the natural world um, in that bright state that yeah, we get it in. So it needs to be mixed in with something. Be very careful. Once you've got it on, it's tricky to get off. Uh, Humbrol powders um, do seem to grab on really, really well. So uh, yeah, just be aware of that. Now this isn't going to be random along the. Uh, this isn't going to be uniform along the um, along the wagon. It is going to be random. Um, some patches will be dirty than other. Um, some will be more mouldy than other. So uh, yeah, just try to be a little bit more. Um, yeah, a little bit random. Try and think where the where the dirt would build up naturally. Maybe around the wheels where the you know the water's splashed uh, if it's going along in the rain. And then on these panels, just before we finish the weathering, we're just gonna put some random markings in there. Uh, they'd be destination boards, I guess, or something like that, or I don't know, maybe there's some code what this number might be. I have no idea. It's just a, just a random marking for, for this particular one. And the idea of this is that it's a destination and that's been crossed through. Or it, it's, it's small, it's gonna be hardly legible at that size anyway, if it's handwritten. And then we'll just quickly dust that over quickly just to uh, make it look like it's been there for a little while. And a final thing we need to do is just a bit of powder into the wheels. It'll be uh, uh, a little bit rusty at this stage, I guess. And then we'll move on to one of the ends. We'll just do one of the ends, the other side and the other end is gonna be the same, so I won't duplicate everything again. But on those buffers, they would, uh, the stage be um, showing signs of corrosion, so we use our, our mid rust on that one. And also around the, uh, the, the coupling hook there. And then just a bit of the yellow one, just to, uh, just to highlight that a bit more. And then we're going to use our combination of the green chrome oxide and a Humbrol dark earth wetting powder just to uh, just to dirty up the ends of this uh, fruit van. And that's it, we are pretty much done for this one. So we'll give this coat of uh, lacquer after and just seal everything in. And there it is on the track. So I hope you enjoyed this one and um, hope to see you very soon in Abundance Yard. Thanks for joining us.